Okay, I think I'm going to make the title of this video probably something like, Get the Glue Out. <laughs> so, any of you that have watched my videos know I'm always preaching about <laughs> the most important things you can do to a radio. Uh, any radio, electronic, you know, CB radios, uh, export radios, and actually this stuff has been used in most all electronics made for decades. And it's the glue that, as it ages, it changes, and it becomes corrosive and conductive. Uh, the conductive part, yeah, that's bad enough. You know, you end up usually losing receive sensitivity, or in the case of a radio like I'm working on here, which is a President HR2510, uh, you'll usually start to lose transmit power, because all of the coupling transformers in the RF amplifier circuit are toroid style on a ferrite core and they pour that glue all over them and it eats we where they strip the enamel coating off of the magnet wire off so they can solder the leads well the glue touches that it's not protected because there's no enamel on there anymore and it eventually shorts out the the windings but it doesn't usually do any actual electronics damage um as it, you know, shorts stuff out. But when it starts to just eat the leads off, yeah, that's a whole different story. You know, once the leads are gone, uh, you know, integrated circuits, resistors, capacitors, the toroid transformers, yeah, it, it just wreaks havoc inside a radius. Always tell people, get the glue out. And people ask me all the time, well, how do you get it out, Mike? And honestly, up until today, I always said, elbow grease. There's nothing easy. An assortment of dental picks pliers, you know, tweezers, a good assortment of tweezers, lots of men, lots of patience. Uh, it's kind of like I'm using dental picks for a reason, because that's basically what you're doing. You're just acting like a dentist, scraping and scratching and prying that gunk off. Um, now this, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to use this everywhere. I probably would not suggest pouring this stuff on the circuit board, um, but at least in the case of the toroid transformers, which were actually you can see three of them. There's a little tiny one there and two of them there. And there's one inside of that little aluminum cylinder. And it's inside of an aluminum cylinder for a reason. I was working on, I think it was this one, getting the glue. And you'll notice, look how nice and clean that is. There's just no glue on there whatsoever. And that's the original windings. I didn't rewind this. Um, and it's actually, this one had Actually, all of these transformers had so much glue on them. I was just about to the point trying to get it off. I was like, you can actually see on this one, I think, yeah, the transformer's kind of shiny right there. You can see where I was scraping it off of the actual ferrite core right there. Um, I was about to give up trying, because it was all in between all the windings, and I was just never going to get it out. Well, notice, I got it all out. And actually, it took almost no elbow grease whatsoever. Um... And what I used, and I've been using this stuff for years, I just never really thought about using it for this. Um, I was always afraid, I guess, it, it would eat the enamel coating off of the wire. Well, it was to the point where I was like, what do I got to lose? I'm going to have to rewind the thing anyhow. It's a time-consuming process. you got to make sure you get your, especially on the, the ones that have more windings. Like, actually, you can't even see it. It's so small on the camera. But this little guy here, it's got lots of windings. And re Come on, focus. These little guys have lots of little small windings. They're just a pain in the butt <laughs> to rewind. So, I thought, what the heck? I've got nothing to lose. Been using this stuff for years. I love it. Uh, for starters, want to use this in a well-ventilated area. It is strong. <laughs> Mainly it's uh, acetone, but it has some other chemical goodies in it. And I've shown this before. It's acetone, 2 lone butyl acetate, and ethyl uh, acetate. Really nasty stuff, extremely flammable, like your room will blow up. Um, you don't want to be in a room too long, in an enclosed room, uh, you may pass out and never wake up again. It's it's just some nasty stuff, but it works really well. I use this for cleaning certain things, and it's fantastic. You know, it's radio TV cement solvent. Well, with glue, cement, same thing. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just pour a little bit, and this is actually an electrolytic capacitor can is what that is. I just cut it off and gutted a capacitor out. And you can see there's a toroid transformer down in there with along with some glue. Uh, of course, I cleaned all the glue out that I had actually chipped out of the radio. I'd vacuumed it up, so luckily the, pro you know, the 
processor board here has lots of glue on the voltage regulators and so I've pried this one up and got a few chunks and just to show how hard this stuff actually is all the glue still on this transistor or uh, voltage regulator you can hear you know the stuff's hard it's hard as a rock <laughs> okay and when's the last time you ever saw that glue you could do this to it that it was rubbery and flexible <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this stuff rubbery and flexible and just disintegrating like that yeah that's all it took it was some GC electronics radio and TV cement solvent and the way I actually got the glue off of here uh, I soaked it you know this is the first experimental when I tried this um, you know I was put it in there for a while and it was really thick so I actually I you know pulled a bunch of chunks off with the tweezers at first and then I got to think well, I'll just let it in there and soak for a while and I just grabbed a stiff bristle brush and surprise surprise once you actually let me get my get this gunk all over the place I can just brush the glue off so there you can see this one still has Lots of glue trapped in the windings there. There's just, you know, you're in the wire. There's no way you're ever going to be able to get that out without actually scraping the enamel off and uh, then <laughs> possibility of the winding shorting out. You just come in here with a brush. Always try and keep your wires in line. Look at that. The glue's gone. Come on, focus. Just brushes away. Ah, it was in focus for a second. Come on, camera. I just don't like... But take my word for it. It's all gone. You're just not going to focus on that, are you? There you go. Look at that. All the glue's gone. Just whoop. A couple, couple scrapes of a stiff bristle nylon brush and gone. So... There you go. There's the secret. There, There is a trick. <laughs> I've always said that, nope, there's no trick to it. Just elbow grease and, you know, cases like that. Worst case scenario, you just have to rewind them. Um, now, I can probably guarantee you this stuff will be made until the end of the universe. <laughs> the universe will die a cold, long death. And uh, GC Electronics is probably still going to be in business, if nothing else, making this stuff. Just for the simple fact that about a year ago, I bought two cases of this stuff. So I've got bottles and bottles <laughs> and bottles of this stuff. Yeah, i got literally two cases of it because I really like it. I use it a lot. Um, and anytime I've ever found anything that I really like... The day that I decide, you know something, I really like that stuff, always seems to be the day that they decide to stop manufacturing stuff. So since I have bought two cases of this, uh, and I have a now a pretty much lifetime supply of it, you can be guaranteed they'll never, they're never going to stop making it. <laughs> um, you know, just go online, you can find it at GC Electronics. There's the product code, 10-320. Um, but the, yeah, like I say, I really like this stuff. It works great for reviews. Soft, softening up uh, stuck cores and transformers when they put Loctite on the cores and like IF transformers. There's lots of things I use this for. Got to be careful with plastics. That's the thing. This stuff will melt most anything made out of most types of plastic. That's why I say you really don't want to just be pouring this stuff inside of a radio. Yeah, there might not be much of a radio left when you get done. If you get this on the faceplate of that radio sitting over there, I guarantee you it's going to melt the faceplate. You're, there's no fixing it. You get a drop of this stuff on there, even if just in two to three seconds you grab a wipe and wipe it off, you're going to wipe, it'll it'll take the, the paint that's on there for starters right off. It's nasty stuff, so you got to be really careful. But uh, my experiment mainly was to see if it, if this enamel coating on the magnet wire was resistant to it, and it is. That stuff, it's still hard and just, you know, like it was... You know, like that wire was just coated with the enamel coating yesterday. So, there you go. There's my tip for uh, actually fairly easy removal. I mean, that's, man, wow, that's the hardest part. Getting it off flat surfaces isn't too bad. I can come in here and just, you know, pop that regulator up, and I can come in here and just 
shear all that stuff off with this little flat, you know, I've got that one, I don't even know what the heck they call these, you know, I'm not a dentist, but I sharpened the tip to basically a razor's edge on that thing, and yeah, I can just easily scrape it off, but stuff like this, okay, you've got a resonator here um, for the processor, trying to get the glue out of there, now all I gotta do is just pop that little guy loose, desolder, desolder, I can just drop that in that little, my little, uh, can over there, um, wait about 30 seconds, pull it back out, grab the brush, and it'll just come off. But again, this has an epoxy coating. You know, if you get it on the plastic of like this capacitor, not the capacitors are going to get changed, but, you know, it'll eat that off. I've never really tried it. I don't know, maybe the, some of the silk screen printing, I'm not sure how resistant that would be to that stuff. The plastic for connectors, yeah, it would probably melt them. Um, so, you know, if you're going to use it on anything other than what I just showed here, best thing to do is it's kind of like they tell you it's clean with most cleaning products. Test it in an inconspicuous place first. So, you know, pick something that, you know, if it gets damaged, you don't care. You've got a replacement. See if it'll melt it. You know, it's not going to hurt glass. It's not going to hurt metal. Um, apparently does not hurt the enamel coating on magnet wire. But, uh, you know, use cautiously. But yeah, for at least in this case, transformers, you know, ferrite beads, you know, anytime you have a ferrite bead or a core, um, <laughs> that's my new go-to procedure. Soak and a brush. So much better than spending a half hour, 45 minute with dental picks, tweezers, and pliers. So there you go. I hope that uh, helped somebody. Uh, now, where can you get this? Like I said, go online. Um, me, personally, I just get it from a local electronics supplier. Yes, I'm one of the few lucky people probably still on the planet that within a reasonable driving distance, I have an actual electronics supply house. They're an, an mainly industrial supplier, but they're a, a dealer for GC Electronics, and they stock this stuff. Um, so, you know, like I said, I've, about a year or so ago, I went over and bought two full cases of it. But uh, you might even be able to get this on eBay. I know a lot of a lot of the GC Electronics distributors do sell on eBay. I don't know if they have this product. Uh, reason being, as it says, extremely flammable. So you know, with hazmat shipping, um, you'd really need to check. But a lot of times, even hazmat stuff, they can ship small quantities as long as it's uh, what do they call that? Consumer. What is it? O R M D. I don't. I can't even remember. You see the labels on containers. It's a hazmat hazmat item, but as long as it's a small quantity, it's allowed to ship through. You know, like normal ground shipping. But uh, it's easy to find. Like I say, Google search or eBay is probably you can get it there too. But uh, yep, there you go. And of course, if you work on speakers, it's great for getting the cement off of speakers. That's what it was originally designed for. If you're reconing speakers. But uh, there you go. So I hope that helps somebody and save your sanity of trying to get that stupid glue off.